there to begin with. No, nope, never. They, all, all, all of it is made of it. We just had a, a, another incident recently where a friend of ours was in jail for four days, and uh, she said that when she was in there, there uh, aside from copies of the Bible being everywhere, there was a copy of uh, a, uh, some pocketbook to, to Canadian law sitting right there on the bookshelf, right in prison. And she picked it up and read it, and, and read halfway through the book, and the entire book was replete with references to common law and to the legal person and the differentiation between you and the legal person. And she just went, holy shit, it's all right here. They're making it available, but what do most people do when they go to jail? Okay, well, I, I've been there. I can tell you what they do. They spend more time talking on the phone, uh, blabbing about who they're going to kill when they get out of there than they do actually yeah. reading a book. Exactly. Right? So don't bitch and complain if you if you don't know your rights because they, they, they've made every effort to make it available to you just because they didn't sit you down in a classroom and bore it into your brain. They've made it available for you. So your rights okay, are your now, own. Here's something, though. J uh, George Hugh, Farmer George, I don't know if you've heard about his plight, have you? Nope. Okay, well, he was denied access to any books in his cell. Okay. Um, so, what of that? What what would what would what would he do then? Now, this is the one that's taking Monsanto to court. Okay. For um for it, for his uh for uh, I'm sorry because they wanted him to grow Monsanto crops if I'm not mistaken, and he or because it was cross pollinating with his. I can't remember the actual story. I'm actually asking the listener now. Um to further cl clarify but the the thought is is that they were de he would de completely denied access to any books okay. so what would what would end up happening in that situation if you don't have access to it well number 1 um it's it's the same thing as when you go to court um and you are arrested for say contempt of court and i've had this happen where you're you're taken downstairs you're handcuffed you're brought back up later um and then uh no mention is made of it. Like sometimes the, the judge will even just look at the sheriff and they'll come and grab you and they'll drag you out of there, right? Right. That never happened. An injury not expressed cannot be addressed, right? If they, right. Did, if they denied you access to a book while you were in jail, most people just bitch about this stuff, but did you actually, actually swear out an affidavit that that happened and send it into the courthouse or send it into the jail, I, I mean, or send it into the minister responsible for the jails? Nobody ever actually expresses an injury. Right. Swearing out an affidavit and sending it in, in somewhere and then having them not reply to it, right? We have to express these injuries, and we're not. And expressing doesn't mean that we, we, we bitch about something that happened to us on an online blog and expect a politician to read it somewhere and then take up your crusade. Okay, right? now the, the situation here is that far, Farmer George... His farmer George was his crops were infected with GMO carried by the wind. Um, he's refused to give a plea and has been held over ninety days in solidarity. Okay, good. Then if he had somebody there with him helping him, like an organization like we have together now, somebody would have filed a uh, which we call it a writ of habeas corpus already on the courts to find out why he's in there. Um, somebody could be filing a motion for him. You can write your you're provided with pencils and paper in court. You could write your own motion. It doesn't have to be correct. Remember, substance is everything, right? right? When they do drag him out and they bring him into court, is he getting it on the record that all this stuff has happened? Because as far as the court's concerned, you showed up there of your own free will. Right. They're not even acknowledging that you're being held in prison in between these appearances. Now, I have another, I have another question here asking about the changes of the Declaration of Human Rights. What is your what is your uh, just uh, ask about the changes of the Declaration of Human Rights? What do you have to say to that? There's been changes. Apparently, that's what I have to say about that. Continual, continual change. Which he okay? So Ray in chat, he's asking um, what changes because he doesn't understand. Okay, and just, now I'm seeing just, that. Far sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, go go right ahead. <laughs> I would use the original Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the one that was published in France a couple hundred years ago. Because there's a maxim of law about, uh, about laws, and when there's two conflicting laws, the older and the easier to understand is to be taken as more true and accurate. Use the original oh, Universal getting... Declaration of Human Rights. 
And now you're getting the question, are they written in stone? Which means were they completely untainted and, and was there an actual stone writing? Because obviously written in stone comes from something because if it's written in stone, it cannot be altered. So is it set somewhere in stone then? No, because where did the Universal Declaration of Rights come from? Some guy sat down and wrote it and then published it and everybody said, hey, that's a great idea. Right. Well, I okay, think now back idea. to the farmer. Yeah. <laughs> Back to the Farmer George thing, it was not about Monsanto, I'm sorry, it was a couple of traffic tickets and afterwards he was apparently detained for assault. So I don't have enough information about this and I apologize. Um, I'm going to send the information to you and you can look into it if you'd like to yeah. and then get back to me in a private S talk and then I can update people on that. Somebody I have a YouTube right here to send you. Okay. Somebody sorry. in his area, wherever he lives, can go down and they can file a writ of habeas corpus in that court file. You do not have to be an interested party to file a writ of habeas corpus for someone that is in jail. Because it's actually our duty as men and women to protect other people. And that means when somebody's being held in jail with no family and no friends on the outside, it's actually our duty to go in to help that individual. Yeah, writs and of too many corpus. people. Sorry, sorry go ahead. Yeah, writs no, no. of habeas corpus are meant to be filed by anyone. Anyone who says, well, we hey, have that guy's no being held idea. without charge. Nobody, nobody has ever taught any of these things, though. This is the idea that we are not educated. We're educated by the public system that does not want us to know anything about how we are to protect ourselves against the government because the government's our nanny and watching out for us and will always take care of us because we obviously cannot take care of ourselves. Yeah. And you know what? Pe people have to get mad about this kind of stuff. You got to get worked up. What's that movie? Network there that uh, you know where you know, I want you to get mad. Yes. You know, yes. and, and that that's exactly. true. You got to go down. You got to go down to these courthouses, and you got to take witnesses with you, and you got to walk up to 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 one of the desks where you're going to file a motion. You got to claim a sheriff as a witness and say, "Go to the sheriff station, sheriff. I have a problem. I need you to be a witness for me." and stand under your oath of office as my witness. Are you? Can you do that? And he'll say, well, yes, of course. You come down to this desk with me right now where I'm filing a motion for somebody who's being held in, char in jail without charge. And you walk down to that desk, and you get fucking mad. So you file this fucking writ. You file the fucking thing. That's your job, public servant. This guy's being held in jail without charge, and it fucking offends me. I'm a member of the public. This is a free country. We're all free people here. Get mad at them. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing that you've done. You've you've basically you're you're polite until and and respectful until you see that they are not, until and that, that they try and turn the tables of stupidity on you more or less. Yep. Yeah. And well, ignorance is something that just can't be tolerated because that's what they try to do. They either try to belittle you and yep. make you feel like you're some kind of idiot that has no clue as to what they're talking about. There you go. I mean, and somebody could just easily say, okay, you know what? I've got my witness right here that just saw you denying or, or refusing to file this writ of habeas corpus in, the, in a public court file. I'm going to have him swear out an affidavit or be my witness. I'm going to take this to Queen's Bench. I'm going to sue the shit out of the province or the state or whoever for human rights violations. I'm also sending a complaint to, and this is, well, this is one I love that I, I haven't used yet personally myself either. I haven't had occasion to yet. I'm hoping the government wakes up before I really got to get involved in it. But send a complaint to the military, to the provost marshal, or to the lieutenant governor, the governor general of Canada, in the form of an affidavit. Say, I have a complaint about a human rights abuse, a human rights violation. You had better do something about this. Why aren't people doing this? We're they, well, because we're bred unfair. We're too self-absorbed, too. Well, I don't want to get involved. Well, an, a, an apathetic. Yeah, they'll come down on me next. Good, good, let them come down on me. I dare you. Yeah. Well, that's like somebody said to me, like, are you ready to be ostracized from society? And I went, I already am. I don't believe in half the things, more than half the things that all you people do. I can't sit in a school parking lot and talk to any of the other mothers there because it just makes me want to pull out my hair. I don't like to go shopping. I don't like to consume. I, what I do like to consume is not something that anybody, like, that's law-abiding appreciates there's so many things that makes me anti-conformist that how can i possibly i just you, and i don't know yeah I'm, I'm actually reading on the the message down here on the, on the point that was just made here uh, uh, a minute ago about uh, if you think about it names are made up of words and can't be properly defined so they are irrelevant 
right. on the little message board down below. And actually, I, that, that's a great point I'd actually would like to make uh, to, to expand on, actually. Um, we obviously need speech to communicate with one another and express injuries, but how many people have defined the words they're using in any complaint they're making against the government beforehand? This is how I define my word. This is how I define injury. This is how I define person. This is how I define this. If you have a different definition, you tell me what your definition is, and I'll tell you if I agree with you or not. Right? You have to agreement of the parties. That's what law is. That's what a definition of a word is. It's agreement of the parties. A pen isn't a pen until you both agree that's what it is. So people are going to court without even getting any agreement from their adversary of what the hell, what definitions of words they're going to be using. That was in one of the notices I sent to a prosecutor a year ago where I said, well, I said my definition of, of fee simple is in Black's Watch Law Dictionary where it says I'm the sovereign authority over my property. Do you have a different definition? Okay, well, that never went to court. No, he, he, because they had nothing. Their definition was different, and it's not my definition, and I told them I don't give a shit about your definition. Simple thing. Now, another thing, another thing that's been brought to my attention is that corpus juris secundum is a secondary law of the land, which is crown or common law. Where is the first law? The first, well, the first law, it tells you right at the very, uh, what, what, what Canada, the nation of Canada recognizes as the first law is the first line of the Charter and Rights and Freedoms. And that says, uh, whereas Canada is a nation founded on the principles that recognizes the supremacy of God. That tells you right there, the first law of Canada is God's law, the Bible. That's what we were founded on. The second law is the law of man. The law of man is contract law. There is only two forms of law. Common law is, is contract law. It's man's unlimited common law right to contract, period. Uh, one of the things you don't want to be subject to is democracy, rule of the masses. Well, 50% of the people think I'm crazy, so I guess I am. I guess I should go to jail. <laughs> now, what about, right. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm reading here, the caucus amicis is the first law. See, I don't understand this terminology, so I, this is what I'm posing out to you from a listener that's listening in. Yeah. Um, and, it sa and then says, but the, second door is, the secondary law is God's law. The first law is natural law or the law of the tribes which is amesis. Anything to say to that? I don't, I don't know. You know, I would, I would actually agree with that, but then you've got to define what your dealing is with other tribes, right? Like, you, right. you, you, you can get to, like, all that, all that means is if uh, I got a tribe and this guy over here has a tribe and we get together and we're going to do uh, trade together or we're going to have dealings together, we're going we're gonna to come to an agreement or a treaty on how we're going to um, conduct our affairs together, how we're going to treat one another. Absolutely, right. that'd, be the, that'd be the highest authority. So the highest authority would be natural law and, and law between uh, well, individual nations or tribes. What, what do you want to be governed by? Uh, my, the creator's law. Okay, then that's what you're governed by. And myself, and my, but I don't put myself above the creator because I know that I was sent here for, or brought here for a purpose. Yeah, how could you put yourself above your says. creator? That's, that's another exactly. maximum law. The created cannot become greater than the creator. Yes. Period. You know, I have here, I'm repeating, Cacus Amesis defined as a forgotten law left to the discretion of the common law in Black's Law Dictionary 73. This is, first law is the clan mothers of the land. And I, I see what he's getting here. This is why he's, he, this is why um, this particular listening listener is saying he's trying to get to somewhere, and I see it now. Um, and it goes back to the... Uh, uh, defeminization because clan mothers were originally the ones that were instructing the chiefs of the tribals. The fact that they're, like, if you go back to ancient times, the clan mothers were running the show until the corporation came here and made it a man's world. I've heard about um, this. So this is something that he's concerned with, and he's also um, asked me to share his contact with you, which I will do after the show. Yep. I'm just going to put that out there so he knows, because he thinks that you can both help each other. Yeah, if, if, if you and your people, like, and, and I, I mean this is a broad term, I'm not specifying somebody, you and your people, if anybody and their people want to simply leave and go and not be ruled by democracy or the masses and start their own nation and reintroduce their ancient laws, then do it. Just go do it. There's no law that says you cannot do it. And now he's saying that he's saying though, Dean, in, in big loud letters, you're my people too. You came from white tribe. You are no different.